Hello guys, welcome to Python and Machine Learning Daily. Yesterday, in a previous video on this channel, we've created a script to split CSV file into smaller chunks, smaller files. And I gave you kind of like homework to improve that and refactor the repeating parts into functions. But I decided to shoot a follow-up to improve that code in general with parameters. If you haven't seen yesterday's video, the link will be in the description below. But even if you don't have time to watch it, a brief summary. We are reading the file of salary CSV with some variables initialized, and then we build a chunk. And as soon as that chunk of rows reaches 50,000 rows, we write that into the new file of salaries1.csv, salaries2.csv, and so on. And then we also write the leftover after the last chunk in the remaining file. And there are a few things we can improve in the script. And this will be kind of a practice of refactoring in Python. So thing number one is repeating part. The identical part should be a separate function. And then what if the person using that script has a different file name, not necessarily salary CSV. So that should be a parameter. Then also, what if they want to split the file not by 50,000 rows, but some other number that also should be a parameter. So let's take care of all of those step by step. First, let's copy all that with file and let's refactor that into a function. We will use PyCharm for that. So we have refactor extract method and let's call it write to file like this. And we can reuse that write to file here on the bottom like this. And now if we take a look at the function created by PyCharm, I don't like a few things here. So first global variables, which we don't need because we have that writer defined here inside, but also we need to pass the parameters. What would be the file number or we can pass the full file name. What would be the header and the chunk that we need to write? And let's create them as parameters with different names so that it would be clear that these are function parameters and not outside global variables. So file name, then data chunk and data header, which may be empty by default, none. And then instead of all that salary CSV, we add file name, then instead of header, we have data header and instead of chunk data chunk. And also we check if that data header is not empty. So if data header, only then we do indentation of right row. And now we need to call that function with those parameters. So I've cut the F string for file name and I will paste it here. We have F string of salaries file number. And then we want to write the chunk with header that we do have already as a variable here. Let's actually close the sidebar so it would be more visible. So write to file with those parameters and we need to repeat the same thing, the same values here at the bottom. Of course, you have a freedom to choose different kind of parameters, but this is just my version of refactoring. If we try to relaunch that, it should be successful. Let's open the sidebar again to see if those CSV files are regenerated. No errors here, it's still successful. Now let's take care of those parameters of salaries and 50,000. Because these are parameters, that whole script, the main.py should be also a function which we would call outside. So let's do exactly that. Def split CSV, for example, with parameters. What would be the file name? And what would be the number of rows to split? Let's call it row count by default 50,000. And then this will be our function. So we'll add indentation to all of that. And then at the bottom, we can call that function split CSV with salaries CSV and 50,000. Or since it's default value, we can skip that. And I see the underlined values here. So probably I haven't copied those, of course. We need to copy those inside of the function because those variables are local to split CSV like this. And then also we need to replace salary CSV with the file name here, paste, and then instead of 50,000, of course, we need to use that row count. 
But wait, now I see that we named the parameter and the internal variable the same name. So let's rename one of them. Let's call the internal variable row number. Row number zero, and then we'll increase that row number and check that if it doesn't exceed the row count. And also we need to change that to zero here. So row number will be the internal variable and row count will be the parameter. The final thing to refactor here is salaries. This is still the original file name. So we need to use the variable of file name here, but our variable is the full name, something.csv. So we need to split that to original file name and extension and use only file name here. To do that, we will use string function, file name split, split by dot, and then we assign that to name and extension like this and we'll use only the name below or actually let's rename the two original file name like this it would be more clear so original file name and also we use that instead of salaries we have original file name and also instead of csv we have extension so now our f string of python makes even more sense and let's copy and paste that part all that function to the bottom piece you can also transform that into a separate variable that's your personal preference and let's try to launch the same script and as a proof that it actually works let's add another for example new salaries like this Let's open the sidebar for the files and you should see new files generated here on the left. As you can see, it is successful. So we didn't break the script, but we refactored that. As you can see, the CSV is correct. We refactored that into one function, which someone else can launch from the same Python script or from other Python script with other parameters of other file names or split by, for example, 10,000 rows or something like that. I hope this refactoring session is useful for Python developers beginners and I hope you've learned a thing or two about functions, variables and general structure of a Python script. If you have any questions as usual shoot in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel because I will keep shooting daily videos. That's why channel is called Python Machine Learning Daily. So Monday to Friday you will see new videos on this channel. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.